Hey. What's up, y'all? This your boy, X Hoodis. Coming to you with another lovely live. Today's topic is about the caveat against discouragement. I know a lot of people have been hitting me up in my inbox, letting me know that they're going through things and people are trying to discourage them off their path or distract them off their path. I just want to let you know, don't give up. Don't you dare give up. I just want to thank everybody. Thank you for tuning in tonight to this amazing video. I need everybody to stay watching the video until the end of this video because the information I'm about to break down to you is so vital. It's so vital. And I guarantee you, you're not going to want to miss out on this ism I'm about to drop on your spirit. <clears throat> I'm going to need everybody to go ahead and heart and like the video. Comment on the positivity or you will be blocked and deleted. And share this video, please, and thank you in advance. This your boy, X Hoodis. And tonight we're about to get into another dope discussion with your boy. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Tonight we're going to talk about the caveat of discouragement, baby. But let me tell you something, chosen ones. You're special. You have the anointing written all over you. You have unmerited favor written all over your forehead. And your haters and enemies can see you. You can't hang out with everybody. You can't talk with everybody about your dreams and goals. You can't take down everybody's phone number because everybody is not going to be happy for you. I just got to keep it real with the people. Everybody not going to congratulate you when you win. Everybody don't want to see you get to the next level. Everybody just don't want to see that. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, we living in our last and evil days where the chosen ones are going to be the ones that's most talked about. The chosen ones are going to be the most hated on. The chosen ones are going to be the most ones that's going to get betrayed by the Judases of modern day today. It's going to happen to the chosen ones, y'all. I'm sorry, because guess what? We are the light of the world. And when you are the light of the world, people can't, you know, they like, how, how can I say this? People are not used to your realness. People are not used to you being the light of the world. They not used to that, y'all. But let me tell you something. These Decepticons, these so-called chosen ones, y'all time is up. It's the new generation, baby. People time is up and they can't believe that God chose you for the mission. That's right. Little poor old century. Little poor old me. Little poor old Exodus. Little poor old me. Yeah. Understand where I'm coming from. Because I'm telling you right now, we're living in our end times where everybody is trying to get to the top of the mountain. Everybody trying to get to the next level. Everybody's trying to get into the kingdom of heaven, but unless you repent and accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord Savior, you ain't going. I'm sorry to tell you. You're never going to get to the next level if you're all about yourself. You're never going to get to the next level if you're not helping nobody else. I'm sorry to tell you, but you ain't going. You ain't getting in. You're not going to get to the next level if you're trying to take everything that God has given you. And now you're taking it for granted. And using it for your own power and your own personal gain. You're not going to get into the next level. You ain't going to get to the next level. It's a lot of people out here that are in high power. It's a lot of people that are chosen. Don't get it twisted. It's a lot of people that are anointed. But they use that anointing for the wrong things. Don't get it twisted. You got to have the spirit of discernment and watch them. These wolves and sheep clothing understand where I'm coming from. But let me tell you something right now. I'm not worried about nobody else. It's a personal relationship. I'm going to get what God got for me. 
I just know that if I keep going for my calling, and if I keep going toward my purpose and my vision that God got for me, I'm already knowing that God going to make a way for me. Amen, y'all. We too busy doing this. We too busy doing that. We too busy trying to impress people that don't give about us. We too busy going clubbing. We too busy going this, going that, going on dates, doing this, going for whatever. Your calling. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And I guarantee you all these things shall be added unto you. You got to seek the kingdom of heaven first. What the devil meant for evil, y'all, God turned around for your good. I just want to let you know, you owe God everything. You don't have nothing to prove to people, but all to prove to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Because, see, he is the one who's going to have the last say at the end of your life. These people don't believe that God chose you for the mission. <laughs> they don't believe it. They can't believe it. They never will believe it. But they see it, though. They see it. Trust me. People are watching. Your enemies are watching you. Your adversaries are watching you. People that claim not to be inspired by you, they're watching you. People that act shady in front of your face and try to throw shade on your success, baby, talk about you behind your back. Guess what? They watching you too. <laughs> Why you think I'm telling you this right now? Because I'm actually living it right now, y'all. I'm going through it right now. So I can relate and I know it resonates with y'all. See, it's funny because before I was doing my calling, right? Before I was going after my purpose that God called me for, when I was in the world lost, everybody was so-called my friend. Everybody wanted to hang out. Everybody wanted to link up. But as soon as God brought me out of that mess, <laughs> as soon as God brought me out of that darkness into the marvelous light, Soon as God, you know, start blessing my YouTube channel and my Facebook channel and start blessing me inside my life, you know what I'm saying, get me back into church. Soon as God started making me more successful in the inside and out, guess what, y'all? You wouldn't believe the people that turned on me. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't believe the people, they can't really look at me in my face now. You wouldn't believe some of the spirits I get from the people I thought I would never get from, y'all. I know y'all going through it. I'm going through it too. Understand what I'm saying, though. Everybody not going to be happy of your success because people are too busy in competition with you, right? <laughs> but they in competition with themselves because I ain't competing, baby. They too busy trying to be better than you. When they really need to work on themselves because it's not about us as much as my YouTube and my Facebook channel was popping, y'all. And I appreciate every subscriber that I get. I appreciate all the likes and all the loves and all the shares that I get and the positive comments that I get. But it's not about us. All the glory goes to God because it ain't me. He working through me. Everything you guys are doing for me. I appreciate the love. I see the support. But let me tell you something. I'm nothing without God. I'm going to keep it real. And I pray that God won't take that humility away from me, y'all. I pray to God that he will continue to stir up the gift in me. So guess what? I can help somebody else get to the next level. Because I'm here for a good time, not a long time, y'all. Understand what I'm saying to you. See, people these days... They don't know how to pass the baton. They want to die with it in their hands. People nowadays, they don't know how to say, hey, come on here, young, um, young man. Hey, come on here, young sister. Let me show you the way to go. Let me help you get to the next level. People don't want to do that anymore, y'all, because everyone is about themselves. They selfish. But the Bible when Jesus Christ, he was selfless. Everybody's about greed these days in 2022. 
It's all about me, 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 push, 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 shove, shove, shove. When it's going to be, it should be all about Jesus. When is it going to be about somebody else? Come on now, y'all. Because you never know who's watching you at the end of the day. You looking for God, he right where you left him at. On read. You know how you be leaving people on read? You left God on read. People are mad because I've changed for the better. And they want me to go back to that old me. But I've died to myself. And God has and continues to renew my mind every day. And he's transforming me to glory from glory to glory. I told y'all that in my last life. So if you're looking for the old me, leave my life right now. And go ahead and block yourself because I'm going to stay steadfast and endure until the end. And ain't nobody or the devil in hell going to stop me from getting to the promised land inside the kingdom of heaven. I just want to let you know that right now I'm staying on the narrow road and the narrow path. This is a personal relationship, so don't judge me. And I rebuke your opinions about me and against me because I ain't worried about it. Now, don't get me wrong. When I was out there in the world, I was a hot mess, a toxic mess, to be more specific with (laughs) y'all. But now what happens when light hits the dark, it can't dwell there no more. Amen, y'all? So stop trying to get me to go back to the past, devil. I rebuke you. I want to begin with Psalms 3723. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth. In his way. Before we begin, I want to acknowledge that the Bible states there is none good but one that is God. Mark 10 18. See, the Lord knows you, He knows whom He would have served in every position in His church. He chose you. In our callings, we represent the Savior. And the work we do, no matter how small it may seem, has eternal consequences, y'all. Y'all got to feel me. See, the Bible says, nevertheless, God's solid foundation stands firm, sealed with this inscription. The Lord knows those who are his and everyone who confesses the name of the Lord must turn away from wickedness. Is that right, y'all? Come on now. See, the strength of the Lord is real. The strength of the Lord is real. He will give me the strength. I just know he will. The Holy Spirit will just give me a new surge sometimes, y'all, that just comes out of nowhere. I'm telling y'all. Right when I was, sometimes when I feel like I can't do this, Lord. This ain't for me, God. I ain't built for this or that, God. Choose somebody else who been in the Lord, who, who since birth, they've been reading the Bible since the age of one years old. Choose them, Lord, because I can't do it. I can't do it. It's too much for me. I know some of y'all at times feel like that y'all self. I'm tired of this persecution, Lord. Lord, I'm tired of this. And every single time I was ready to, to tap out, the strength of the Lord will come upon me, y'all. See, now that I have stepped into my calling, I don't just believe in God. I know God. People keep asking me why I change and why I'm doing motivational speaking and inspiring people and living for the Lord Jesus Christ now. They say they don't like the new version of me and the devil trying to do everything in his power to make me take a detour back into my past life. But it's not happening. It's not happening at all. Somebody asks, why change for the Lord? The next time somebody asks you why you change from the Lord, I want you to tell them because you can and you will. And because God sent me. God sent me. See, a lot of people watch my lives because they truly support me. And others just watch me to try to counterfeit my new identity in Christ. And still there's others that watch me because they hate me. Don't get it twisted, y'all. People are nosy. (laughs) People are nosy. I done been through a lot 
and I know I'm going to go through a lot more, but a broken body isn't a broken person. And being a rock and being at rock bottom is the perfect place to start. But then I knew for certain that although my body may be limited, it was the spirit inside of me that was unstoppable. It was the spirit, the Holy Spirit inside of me that was unstoppable, y'all. The world doesn't want to see you win. So stop living for other people and live for Christ. Overall, I think the world is inherently good, though. People are inherently good. But we live in an every man for himself type of world. And that's a shame. That is truly a shame. See, society wants you to fail. Your family wants you to succeed. But only if you do everything on their terms. So inherently, they want you to fail, too. Your friends want you to fail. They won't admit it to your face, though. In fact, they will congratulate and celebrate you, but in secret. They're hoping you crash and burn and come crawling back to their level of mediocrity, but it ain't happening because God will keep changing you from glory to glory to glory. Why? Because they're afraid, they're insecure, and they're lazy. They don't believe in themselves to achieve greatness. So why should they believe in you? Come on now. They're comfortable where they are. Whether good or bad. And they don't want anything to change at all. But you do. I do. If you really think about it, most people are afraid of change. Change means doing something different. Having to learn something new, to question everything you've learned in favor of something you deem better, to go against the grain of everyone else, because only the things you do for Christ will last. Change means putting effort elsewhere. The majority of people don't want that. They want things to remain the same because it's easy. I ain't going to keep y'all too long, y'all. I'm about to get off this. See, this isn't just the case for your friends and your family and your loved ones. It's everyone. It's your family. It's your teacher. It's the corporations that you work for. It's the government. For too long, we've been living on someone else's terms. Think about it. What are the decisions you made in regards to your life because you genuinely wanted to do it? Going to college, the career, the choice, where you live. Did you do it because you honestly, truly wanted that? Or did you do it because you felt obligated to do it for someone else or live by their standards? <laughs> See, someone will always try to keep you in a box that they have built for you. Isn't it about time you started building your own box for your own life? See, here's the caveat. Once you start living your life on your own terms, everything around you changes. The way you see the world changes and the people in it changes. And it can be lonely. It can be lonely at times and it can be a lonely place, but the reward is worth it. I want to ask you, how can you start living for yourself in the Lord Jesus Christ? First, define what success means to you. Take everything else out of the equation. Take out your friends. Take out your family. Take out your limited beliefs. If you live in a perfect world, what makes you feel happy and successful? Understand that success doesn't always have to mean money. <laughs> For me, success is living a life of freedom in Jesus Christ, where I can travel in the spirit. I can travel around the world in the spirit. Y'all can do this. Don't get discouraged. Keep going. Keep living your life. God is with you, and God would save you. I appreciate everybody that's tuned in. This your boy, X Hudders. Just don't get discouraged, y'all.
Keep your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He got you. Until my next slide. Y'all stay encouraged.